there is still a lot of demand for software engineers these days. And on top of that, it's one of the highly paid careers that you can do these days. Well, apart from being a doctor, but then that takes a while. The exact tasks and responsibilities of software engineer can vary from organization to organization. Let me give you my example. In my case, I've been working as a software engineer and a data engineer in my current job. I lead the software development as well as data management. That's because I work in a small startup size company. In another life, I worked at a large Fortune 500 company where I was just doing software development using few technologies and I only had few responsibilities. So what I'm trying to say is it varies from company to company. Sometimes you have a lot of responsibilities and sometimes you only have few responsibilities, but you get paid the same. So, but enough about me, let's just get into what it takes to become a software engineer. Typically, you're going to need a four years bachelor's degree in computer science, or if you have any prior experience in coding or programming, that should work as well. A four year computer science degree can cost between fifty to $70,000. Now, if you have a degree in an unrelated career, that's okay too. You can easily pivot into software engineering as long as you're passionate about it and would like to learn how to code. In my experience, I've seen people change careers from nursing or to software development. So I think anyone that wants to transition over can easily do so at any stage of life. So to do this, I've created a chart which shows what kind of skills and requirements you really need. This right here is a pretty good map of the right skills you need to become a good software engineer. Note, you don't need all of these skills, but you're going to need about 70% of them. So to start, you're going to need some basic skills, which is classified under the front end development. Front end development is also known as the GUI or the graphical user interface. In simple terms, this is the design of your app or software. To start off, you're going to have to know some basics like HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. Once you get a hang of it, you can morph into more advanced frameworks like React or Angular. React or Angular help you build out user interfaces using JavaScript frameworks. Next is the backend. This is the part most users will never see, but it's what drives the front end. For example, the back end is like the plumbing to your house. You're definitely going to need it, but you'll never see it in action. For the back end, you're going to have to know some of the programming languages. In this case, I would say start off with Python as I think it's the easiest to learn out of the three. You don't need to learn all the languages, just the right ones to get the job done. Next are databases. Databases house all the information. For example, let's say you go to Zillow and then look for a house listing there. All the details like the address, bedrooms, lot size, and all the information for that property are stored within a database. So the Zillow website is the front end and the data that you're seeing is coming from the back end and something like Python, C Sharp, or Java is driving that communication to pull that data from the database and display it to the front end Zillow website. As a software engineer, you will need to know these relational databases like MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and maybe Postgres. In addition to that, you're going to have to learn NoSQL like MongoDB. Just Google it. It's quite popular these days. As a software engineer on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll be developing software that adds, updates, and removes data from the database. So you will really need to know how to communicate with it. Trust me when I say this, all this stuff might seem overwhelming, but it's not. It's really simple and really easy to understand. Next is DevOps. So while you're doing some software development, you might need to work on some cloud platforms like AWS or Azure. That's where you're going to be deploying most of your code. So learning the software cycle on how to push changes and how to deploy new software really is required as part of software engineering. Finally, you're going to have to learn native mobile development. This is actually if you want to build iOS or Android apps. This is actually if you want to build mobile apps for Apple or Android devices. For Apple, you're going to need to know Objective-C and Swift. And for Android, you're going to have to know SDK and JDK. My personal favorite is using React Native, which works more like a hybrid mobile development. The idea is to develop once and deploy everywhere like on Android and Apple iOS. I think it's really ideal if you're trying to develop apps for both iOS and Android at the same time, but you have a limited budget. The only downside is that React Native works a bit slower than the native apps that you develop for the platform. And on top of that, you need to learn some additional things that are more specific to React Native. So there's some learning curve and then that might not get reused elsewhere. Overall, if you work on developing these skills, like I mentioned, 
If, and if you put your work every single day, put a lot of effort into it, you should be able to develop these skills in six to seven months. Another tip is learning from online courses. If you're looking to jumpstart your software engineering career, then look into these online courses offered by Google and Coursera. They should give you a clear and better understanding of software engineering. The course that I highly recommend is called Java Programming and Software Engineering Fundamentals. And this course is offered by Coursera. It's an introduction to Java design for absolute beginners, so you don't need any coding knowledge to start this. The second course is called Google IT Automation with Python, which shows you how to automate tasks by writing Python scripts. By the way, this is not sponsored or anything. This is just my opinion and my research. So I'm just sharing it with y'all. Doing these courses will get you a real feel of what to expect. So if this is not for you, then this is a good measuring stick. So what's the outcome? After you put all these hours of learning software engineering, what kind of salary are you expecting? As a software engineer, you can expect a starting salary of eighty to $100,000. Now, different areas and different parts of the country offer different salaries, but these are typically national averages. You should always do your research in your own area to see how much you should be making as a software engineer. As an example, according to Indeed, the average software salary in the United States is around $121,000. And if you look at the top companies, you can see Apple's paying like $170,000, Walmart's paying about the same, Tesla's paying a lot more. So overall, I mean, the job market is there. With these tools like Indeed, Payscale, or Salary.com, you can see the highest paying cities for software engineers. So again, do your research and see where you wanna be in terms of location. Do remember, the higher salary cities bring higher expenses, so choose carefully. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this was insightful and helped you give some real life insights into software engineering. Remember to like and subscribe this video if you found it useful. Until next time, take care.